in lieu of having children. And they like pancakes. I don't know whether they like pancakes or they just like the syrup. I don't know which one. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Pancakes are for syrup? It's a vehicle for syrup? Yeah, syrup vehicle. So I'll just I'll make a quick mixing bowl here. So I got roughly about five to six pounds of clay here. So the more clay you have, the harder it is to kind of organize it and center it. And I'm also working without a motor here, which can be really nice sometimes, quiet. So I'm going through that centering process that you guys were all having such good luck with. <laughs> And it's kind of just like there's a planning, you know, a situation of planning here where you're kind of laying things out in three dimensions. So I'm opening. And here I want to leave enough clay at the bottom so I can trim a nice foot on this bowl. Actually, I started making these bowls oval because they sit good in the arm. And then the other thing is I notice a lot of mixing bowls tend to get cracked and broken at the rim. So I started putting these uh, hollow double-walled rims on these mixing bowls. Gives them character and also makes them really strong. It's funny, um, a hollow tube of clay is stronger because the solid piece of clay, if it gets a crack in it, the crack goes all the way through all the material eventually, you know, because it's very brittle. Crack starts and propagates. Whereas a tube, if it goes through one side, because the, the rest of the material isn't so intimately involved in the solid mass, it can have a crack on one side or a chip and it will live. A towel or a towel? A towel. Yeah. <laughs> So this process of getting a nice thick rim on here goes something like this. You want to kind of plan where it's going to end up. And you want to kind of roll the rim over and have it touch with the end. You don't want it to lay down like that. You want it to touch on the end. So it's a little bit of a trick. Everybody see what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring this rim down and around to hook up with the rest of the material. Just like that. So now I've got air trapped in there. This makes a really nice visually strong rim. And I can have a visually strong foot on there and the piece can be balanced visually from top to bottom. So once I have that completed, now I can like, I can throw the piss out of this bowl and get it nice and thin. When you fire that, having that air in there doesn't cause a problem? I actually do put a little tiny hole in it, and then when I glaze it, the glaze generally covers that hole up. So when you're making larger bowls, um, a, a big key to making larger bowls is keeping everything, you know, there's a bunch of different kinds of curves. This is a positive curve, this is a reverse curve. If you keep it in reverse curve, you can keep making it thinner and thinner and thinner, and then you can switch it to being round and full. But if you try to pull and make things thinner around this positive curve, it just falls down. So you can see I'm kind of in this format right now. You can actually really take this rim pretty far out. And so, I didn't really expose you guys to any tools, but 
little wooden ribs are nice to use. You can get rid of these throwing lines if you want to. It helps kind of compress the clay. It helps you shape. kind of round this thing out on the inside. So I had that reverse curve and now I've gotten it as thin as I want so I'm going to make it positive curve now. So that's a good shape for mixing. And this is a tool that gives me a nice bevel so I can easily trim this when I'm done. And the other thing that I like to do for a mixing bowl is I like to have a little spout. So I'll show you what a spout looks like really quick here. So this is called a pulled spout. There are a couple different spouts. There's an English style spout, pulled spout, which is kind of a more of a part of the um, arts and crafts movement. And then there's also, you can take a piece of clay and kind of add it to it to make a spout. But you notice I'm kind of letting go at the end, right, when I'm pulling up, because I don't, I don't want to get it too thin um, so that it might crack. Be weak. Slice pear plays perfectly inside the pancake. Oh. 